Hello, I'm John Peacock, Professor of Cosmology at the University of Edinburgh. I'm going to tell you some of the ways in which the Higgs field intersects with some of the big questions of modern cosmology. Almost everyone has heard that the universe is expanding and that it began in a big bang. In other words, here we are, the universe is big, it's getting bigger with time. You run that backwards and you conclude that about 14 billion years ago, everything diverged. The density of the universe was infinite. And for many years, we were embarrassed because we'd be asked, what happens here at times before the Big Bang? Or indeed, at the Big Bang, why does the universe start off expanding in the first place? Nobody had any good answers to offer. Since about 1980, though, we have had some potential answers that connect to the Higgs field. And that's what I want to tell you about now. It all comes down to one very simple, but apparently obviously wrong idea, which is that the vacuum can have weight. And I mean, you take some scales, you put a box of absolutely nothing on the top, and yet the scales go down. That sounds bonkers, but actually astronomical data tell us that it's true. So if you're prepared to believe one impossible thing, then maybe you could go for another. That is, the vacuum not only has weight, but rather than attracting, its gravitational effects push. Now this has a profound influence on the expansion history of the universe. If we didn't have any of this stuff, you'd have a piece of the expanding universe and there's mass inside, and that attraction of that mass would slow down the expansion. And it's just like gravity here on Earth. I take my keys, I throw them up, they go up, but they slow down at the top. Why is that? They have kinetic energy. The kinetic energy transfers itself into gravitational potential energy. So this sphere, the potential energy, changes as the sphere expands, and the kinetic energy is drained away. But if I have a sphere of absolutely nothing, and make that bigger, and if it has weight, it ends up with more mass inside it. So rather than becoming less important with time, the gravitational binding effects become more important. And so the only way to conserve total energy is for the expansion to speed up. And so the vacuum actually tries to blow itself apart a little bubble of absolutely nothing just wants to explode. OK, so the idea that the vacuum can have weight actually goes back to Einstein in 1917. We invented the thing called the cosmological constant, was his name for it. What Einstein wanted was a static universe. That's because he didn't know about the evidence that already existed in 1917 from Slipher's observations that the universe was expanding. So he tried to balance the kind of attractive nature of normal gravity, where a sphere of stuff would tend to fall in on itself, with the repulsion of the empty space within which it sits. And he tried to make these two equal and opposite, so the whole thing just sat there, neither expanding nor contracting. He was very close. The modern picture we have is that in the universe today, the effect of the vacuum is about three times as large in its anti-gravity properties as the gravitational attraction of ordinary matter. And therefore, the expansion of the universe is actually speeding up because of this repulsion. So today, astronomical observations tell us how much acceleration there is, and we can measure the density of the vacuum. Roughly equivalent to the density you would get from one hydrogen atom in a cubic meter of space. Almost nothing, but on a cosmological scale, it's immensely important. Interesting thing to bear in mind, though, is it's only important today. Imagine how the density of material is going to change 
with time. For the vacuum, for a cosmological constant, it doesn't change. The vacuum is the same at all times, at least as far as we know. Ordinary material, though, reduces in density. So at early times, the vacuum might as well not be there because the universe is dominated by the density of ordinary material. There's a crossover point and it turns out we live just to the right of that crossover point when the vacuum is about three times as large in density as, as ordinary material. So we can now see what these different eras of matter domination and vacuum domination are going to do for the expansion history of the universe. At early times it's going to decelerate, but at late times it starts to accelerate. So let's draw the history again. Size of the universe versus time. Our old picture was of some continuous deceleration like this. So we'd be here, the universe would be decelerating. But actually, as we've seen around this time, the vacuum starts to become more important. And so we're picking up an accelerating expansion. So we're still left, though, with the problem of the need for a singular origin, the Big Bang, and the question of what happened before it. But before we talk about what might have happened before the Big Bang, Let's deal with the first nutty thing, which is surely how can the vacuum have weight at all? How can this accelerated expansion be taking place? Well, the explanation for it traces back to the uncertainty principle. And this says that on a subatomic scale, you can't have precise knowledge of the position and the motion of particles. This is around us every day. Think of an atom, an electron orbiting around a proton and a hydrogen atom. Why is it the size that it is? The answer is that the uncertainty principle says that the product of the uncertainty in its position, let's say x, times the uncertainty in its mass times its velocity, its momentum, is some constant, Planck's constant. So if we made the atoms much smaller than they actually are, the uncertainty in the velocity would have to be so large that it would exceed the speed of light, and that's impossible. So this elementary fact governs our everyday life. The uncertainty principle is all around us. So let's think about what the uncertainty principle does for the vacuum. All right, so what is the vacuum? We can easily take out all the atoms and so on out of a box, but we're still left with fields. So what are fields? Let's take the electromagnetic field. When we look at something with light, you can think perhaps of a, a, a kind of elastic string, which is the, the kind of lines of force that one sees, say, from sprinkling iron filings around a magnet. Think of that connecting you to the line, the light source, and if you wiggle that string, the disturbance will run along it. And that's what electromagnetic radiation is. So a vacuum is full of all these elastic strings. And if there's light in the box, these strings are excited. So in a vacuum, we take away all those excitations, don't we? No, the uncertainty principle says that it's not possible to know that that line of force is completely stationary. So the energy in one of these wave modes, the energy is n for the number of photons times the energy, Planck's constant times the frequency, plus what's called the zero point energy, a half times the energy of the oscillation. So the vacuum says the lines of force are unexcited, but you're still left with the zero point energy. So the vacuum has to have weight just from
or these zero point motions. So that's the good news, that the vacuum should have weight and we can calculate it. The bad news is when we do the calculation, it's a bit embarrassing. The problem with this is that we add up wave modes of higher and higher frequency and the energy diverges. A better guess is that new physics will intervene to save this. So there'll be some maximum energy of photon that it makes sense to think about. That had better be higher than the kind of physics we've been able to probe at the moment. So let's say 10 TeV, that would be above the energy reach of the Large Hadron Collider. If you do that, you get a better answer. to the 36 kilograms per cubic meter. So that's still grotesquely greater than the observed 10 to the minus 26. So there's a big problem here with this result and what it screams at you is there have to be other contributions to the energy density of the vacuum that somehow can cancel out this, this huge embarrassingly large number.